welcome to a new video lecture today we will discuss a very new topic related with structure analysis too before going to the topic i would like to discuss some of the topics from your essay 1 since these topics are also an important part of this structure analysis too okay so what do you mean by statically determinate structure and what do you mean by statically indeterminate structure and we know that there are three equilibrium equations three equilibrium equation that is sigma v equal to 0 sigma h equal to 0 and then sigma m equal to 0 if we can solve any problem using this three equilibrium equations then such a type of systems are or such a type of structures are called statically determinate structure in addition to this three equilibrium equations if you are using some compatibility equations then such a type of structures are called statically indeterminate structure okay and for solving statically indeterminate structures for solving statically indeterminate structures we are using two approaches what is that force method and other one is displacement method you already studied about the force method in your structure analysis what that is i hope you all remember those terms strain energy method and consistent deformation method okay then regarding displacement method slope deflection method and canis method and we will discuss all those approaches in this structural analysis too and here one more approach is there that is three moment equation okay and in our first module we will discuss about this three moment equation related with the derivation of this three moment equation then related with some problems related with this how can we solve a statically indeterminate structure using this three moment equation okay so now we will move on to our topic that is three moment equation or it is called as clapeyron's theorem why it is called as three moment equation and this three moment equation can be only used in the case of a continuous beam with three supports okay if it is having a three supports that's why it is called a three moment equations sometimes there will be an extension then you have to consider this three beams okay after that you have to consider this three beams okay so this is regarding the three moment equation that is we can use this only for the continuous beam then then coming to our derivation part how it is going to form the e equation for the three moment equation so in this case a continuous beam with a udl is acting and let us assume the magnitude will be w kN per meter and the span length is also given as l1 then l2 respectively for the spans ab and bc then when you are applying a load over a beam there will be deflection is going to happen so sometimes here also some deflection is going to occur the beam is some deflections are going to happen okay and here you have to note down that moment area theorem okay moment area theorem i hope you are remember in this term moment area theorem in mechanics of solids you have studied this moment area theorem to find out the deflection okay this deflection can be used calculated you there are two theorems first one is used to find out the slope and the second one is used that is deflection can be calculated using the second theorem okay moment area theorem okay just you have to revise those those terms only okay not much important so here you can note down that some of the tenses 
H and HC. If the uh, displaced settlement is happening unequal, that is, with respect to the relative position of A with respect to B, that is called as HA. Okay. Then similarly here also you can note down that the relative position of C with respect to B, that distance is called as HC. Okay. And you correspondingly mark the position also. And this will represent the continuous beam between the three successive depths. Okay. That means when you are applying some loads, either you can apply UDL or uh, point load, uh, then some deflections is going to happen and it is only mentioned here. Okay. And our next procedure is to find out the free moment diagram. That means you have to split this beam into two portions. Okay. And here it is in this derivation we are assuming that a UDL is acting. Then you have to calculate the bending moment. The bending moment value is going to be, you all know that the maximum for a simply supported beam with the UDL is acting the bending moment value is going to be W L square by 8. This will be the maximum ordinate value. Okay. And here in this case both in the both spans uh, this UDL is acting. So you, you will get the free moment diagram as a parabola. And you have to mark the area that is capital A1 and also note down the uh, this Center of gravity distance also that is small a1 and here the area that is represented by a2 and here you can see the center of gravity distance from the support c as small a2 okay fine so this is the case related with the uh, free moment diagram then we will move on to the end moment diagram end moment diagram means you have to assume that this simply supported beam is actually it is in a fixed condition if you are assuming that, then how the moment diagram will come? That is represented in this format. That means in the case of a fixed end, there will be a moment value that will be there. Obviously, there will be a moment. That is represented here as MA. And in the case of at the uh, support B, the value is represented as capital MB. And here the value is represented as MC. And also, please note down for the uh, derivation called easiness. Here we are providing or we are uh, dividing it into two triangles, both this AB span and BC span. Okay. And please mark the positions. That means for a right angle triangle, the center of gravity distance will be, that means L1 by 3 from this right angle. Okay. And similarly, you also have to mark the position from this support A that is 2L1 by 3 and here from the support that is 2L2 by 3 for this span okay this A5 and for this this, is, this you can represent it as A6 okay so this is the case related with the end moment diagram so in the first case we discussed that a UDL is acting over a continuous beam then some uh, deflection is going some settlement is going to happen and it is also represented in this format and after that you have drawn the free moment diagram and after end moment diagram okay. we will move on to the derivation part okay so here you can note down that from this diagram if you are taking this portion this ab portion the tan theta value is going to be if you are taking this tan theta value is going to be tan theta equals a1 dash a2 dash by a1 dash a2 dash by l1 okay so that is written here okay and similarly you can also frame in this bc span also that is c1 c2 by l2 and our intention is to first of all we will take this portion that is a what is the value for this a1 dash a2 dash how can you represent from this diagram we can easily understand that this total distance that is h minus this a a2 dash then you will get this small value a1 dash a2 dash okay for finding out this a a2 dash we are going to apply the moment area theorem okay moment area theorem means m by ei diagram multiplied by the 
center of gravity distance we will take the uh, the second theorem for finding out the deflection so that is only applied here you can easily note down that for each terms that means for the ab portion only we are going to consider right now for this first we will consider this area that is free moment diagram that is given as capital a1 multiplied by the center of gravity distance that is given as here a1 capital a1 multiplied by the center of gravity distance that is small a1 then you are going to take the this area this small triangle area that is a3 multiplied by l1 by 3 and after that a4 multiplied by 2 l1 by 3 okay and why this e by e i1 is taken outside it's common for this all tenses e represents x modulus and i represents i1 represents the moment of inertia for this a b span okay so if you are substituting the values for a1 as usually you will mention in this format and here you can for this a3 you can represent as half multiplied by this ma multiplied by l1 then l1 by 2 l1 by 3 okay l1 by 3 this area a3 area will represent this triangle right angle triangle and for here also half mb multiplied by l1 and here also multiplied by the center of gravity distance already given and if you rearrange the mathematical portions that means taking this 2 multiplied by 6 outside you will get the equation in this format that is a1 dash a2 dash will be equal to this and you please represent this as equation number 2 okay now we will discuss about the bc portion that is tan theta equals c1 c2 by this distance is L2 and that is represented here. For finding out this C1, C2, you can note down that this much value is given as C, C2. C, C2 minus this small distance that is HC, you will get the value as C1, C2. Okay. Then again you are going to apply the same principle which you have applied in the AB portion that is moment area theorem. In this case, you can note down that the area of this parabola that is given as a2 multiplied by center of gravity distance small a2 then again this a5 multiplied by 2l2 by 3 from the support c then again a6 multiplied by l2 by 3 minus or hc and just substitute the values for a5 and a6 that is half mb multiplied by l2 for this a5 area and similarly just apply the right angle uh, area that is half mc l2 multiplied by l2 by 3 and uh, please rearrange the equation and you will get the equation number 3 in this format so please try to do by yourself okay the mathematical calculations please try to do by yourself and if you are going to rearrange these values what you got here in this equation 3 and equation 2 if you are substituting in this equation 1 you will get the final equation in this format. So, this is the final equation for the three moment equation. So, MA multiplied by L1 by I1. You can easily remember MA, then second time is MP, and third time is MC. And in the second part, the terms is L1 and L2 will come, and also I1 and I2. And in the third part, uh, the span length L2 and also the moment of inertia i2 will come and here it represents the relative position of uh, the supports h and hc also and uh, the, there is also some terms 6a a1 by i1 l1 and also 6a2 i2 uh, l2 okay so this is the final equation for uh, this three moment equation and while doing problems you will get more clarity uh, in problems we will find out uh, we will apply this uh, maybe the losses will be UDL or point loads okay and while doing problems you will get more clarity so I hope the lecture is very clear for you so with this we will wind up today's section thank you